Hello, my name is Chris Chang, co-founder of Ghost, also the team behind Sandwich.me, the Met Solana Mev Data Hub. Today, we'll be demystifying the inner works of prop AMs. Prop AM now represent 90% of aggregated swap volume. They are um, a hot topic on Solana. And today, we will pop the hood and discover how they work and then showing you how to reverse engineer them. And then we'll zoom in and look at the cat and mouse game between toxic flow and prop AMs. So why is prop AMs? Let's read it quickly. Prop AM looks like just another AM from user's perspective, but they behave more like on-chain market makers with active coding logic. They're closed source with private strategies and curves. And operators actively manage inventory, end quote. They don't take deposits, and they do, oftentimes don't have front end. So you usually uh, interact with them through aggregators. Some aggregators lean on prop and more than the others, but they, are <clears throat> but they all make a dip big on them because um, their price is great. Prop and are very cool. They allow for permissionless swap. It's very competitive um, because they core very tightly. And all they core is very cheap, um, and so they can react very quickly. Generally, we see about two to four profit ends that dominate the industry. But landscape can ship very quickly. So we became very interested in prop end about nine months ago. Since then, we improve our simulation and infra and build visualizer on sandwich.me. So let's dive into the tech. For given prop AMs, we want to build a court function that takes input, um, direction, and relevant account, and then go from there to get the output amounts uh, as you would get uh, if you swap on chain. So we don't want to run SVN simulation to get the answer. The goal is to create a readable Rust port uh, of a swapping logic. So prop and end don't provide decoded or open um, core interface. To see the output at any given time, you kind of have to swap or do the simulation, but we don't want to do that, right? It doesn't reveal the how. So what we want to do um, is that it's to educate you guys. It's fun and close and obfuscated sources can raise the bar, but um, they shouldn't be impossible to read. Here's some important gotcha. Um, there isn't a universal quote. Different signers and transaction composition can actually lead to different outputs. More on this later. So before going over uh, the tools and technique, let's go over one of the popular prop NMs and how they work. You probably already heard or maybe even used Schoonfy. So let's look at how it works and think about it as a Oracle anchor market maker with some, um, <coughs> sorry, with some controls. So one is the inventory control, which keeps reserve at a target and flow control, which really limits how much can be traded at a given price tier per slot. Now the orange value up there are from the pool parameters. Still Oracle protection is explicit. If core is too far away from the Oracle function, the core simply refuses to quote. So on layer one, we have start from Oracle. Layer two, adjust price based on this reserve and desired reserve. Layer three, uh, we penalize quotes as Oracle becomes stale. And layer four, we have execution across up to 10 lengths. And think about each lane as a separate tranche of liquidity of its own spread. The pool fell from the base tranche first and then slowly walk down the ladder. So 10 lengths per side, each with its own cap, meters, and PPN spray. By the way, PPN is parts per million. There's also back, uh, building backfill logic where next lap, after being consumed, refill half of the lane's capacity. And then the following slot after that, if it hasn't been consumed again, then refill completely. And you can see why coding is not smooth 
、um, it's actually piecewise with the explicit stay prolonged、um, limit. And think of all total out as a result of filling your order across ten lanes. Right? We scan from zero to nine, and if it the lanes full, then skip it. Otherwise, we take as much as we can and then、uh, fill it in. And for the slide, we compute an out i,、um, which using the lens court, and then add it to the total out. And then the final total out then is the sum of the slide by slide fills. So now let's dive into how to reverse engineer one of them. So three pillars that we have in mind:、uh, we have simulator, trace, and static. A simulator is to execute transactions on the known state. Right, and a trace is our fork of SBPF, which instructs the VM and log structure trace of what happened. In statics, we decompile the on-chain program using binary ninjas high-level intermediate、uh, language, and then lastly, we tie everything together using an AI agent. So everything is based on an accurate simulator. You need to be able to answer what would this guy. Use again running the state and this input mount. Ghost SBPF is fork where we instruct the VN, and then so that every meaningful action such as function call, return, account rewrite operation, the output is a trace pocket file. From the trace, then we can then rebuild the code summary. Here we see a summary of Tessera V swap, which you can see how which function were invoked and how often. As well as how many times each function reads right to the stack, the heap, and account data, it's a nice bird's eye view. With just the trace, we can then instantly follow the output backward and figure out how it was built up. And this is often a nice starting point because then you can see how obfuscated a program is or isn't, and then get a sense of what's happening here. And now we can use the tool like Binary Ninja to decompile the prop AM, which you then need to install a plugin from Autosec, dump the on-chain program, and then select Solana. The Zera V has 415 functions, but a swap only touches 68. We use our code summary to explore those functions,、um, and then putting everything together into a repeatable prop pipeline. One script simulate a swap. And then write a full report bundle, and then the idea is that for every single swap simulation, it becomes a case file for your AI agent to consume, or you can read it. Topologically sorting code trees also means that agent can start from the ground up, translate them first, and then keep on going up. The AI agent would get to、uh, get all the traces, metadata, the compile code.、Uh, it's a good layer. So now. Let's talk about prop AM actually and the taxi flow. When we look at atomic ops and exclusively touch prop AM, they account for five to ten percent of atomic art revenue. And reacting to taxi flow is、uh, one of the top priority for prop AM. And some prop AM actually give a different output depending on which aggregator program and method that involves the swap. Many prop AM. The instruction use the instruction sysvar to inspect full transactions,、um, who calls me, and what the swap are present and ordering. If not called by wise listed router, apply PBS penalty. Tesera V missing a proper digital dong from about two BPS penalty. If another proper MN swap is in the same transaction, human five may add twenty five BPS. And then so far, V two, three point six BPS. This is involving and bot adult and cycle continues. So here's a, a arbitrage bot that has full discrimination. They start from one transaction to multiple transaction now with a single bundle, and then we look into atomic arbs that has grown and now it's the majority. And as you can see here, top pulls it lasts thirty seconds. And lastly. Be on the lookout for unique data set coming soon. The data will execute every on-chain transactions、uh, swap a prop end against other prop ends, and then what the output will have been, and then kind of like ideal post facto G to understand the gap between execution and achievable execution. Thank you so much.